What's up, you beautiful people? It is I, Ray, your friendly neighborhood anime nerd, here to bring you another review from an anime series from 2008? How long have I been gone? Really quick, I imagine some of you might be wondering where I've been this whole time, and what's the deal with the new name? Thankfully I created a video that explains most of those questions, so if you're curious about that, they'll be linked down in the video description below. For the sake of time, let's continue business as usual, shall we? Today I bring you my review of A Certain Magical Index, Season 1. I figured with Season 3 currently airing, now would be the perfect time to give the show a try. Season 1 of ACMI contains 24 episodes, and I would consider it a supernatural sci-fi action harem. The studio behind this title is JC Staff, with director Hiroshi Nishikiori at the helm, who has directed other anime shows like Angelic Lair, Azamanga Dayo, and Trinity 7. At the time of this recording, a certain magical index is available to stream on Crunchyroll with subtitles, and the English dub can be found on Funimation now. Our story takes place in an advanced scientific city called Academy City. One of the things that make Academy City unique is that it mostly houses young student espers with special abilities. Think of X-Men, but instead of a single school, it's an entire city full of mutants. Our protagonist, Kami Jo Toma, is a talentless level zero esper with the exception of his right hand, which has the ability to negate any esper or magical powers known as a Magin Breaker. However, Imagine Breaker is a double-edged sword, since it also negates Toma's good luck. One day, Toma finds a young girl dressed as a nun named Index. Index is on the run from Necessarius, a secret religious magical organization from England. Necessarius wants to take Index because of the magical knowledge she has in her head. You see, Index has a photographic memory, and she has memorized over 100,000 forbidden grimoires, or magical texts. The details of how she attained this knowledge is a mystery, because Index has no memories before she arrived in Academy City. How convenient. So it is up to Toma to save Index from the evil church and anyone else who would dare harm the young maiden. And that is the basic setup for this one. The story has plenty of twists and turns, some of which had me on the edge of my seat, and others that made me smack my head and said, you gotta be kidding me. Season 1 can be broken into 6 short stories. To be honest, I really didn't care for some of the early parts that mainly focus on Index. However, when the show focused more on the other espers, such as Mikoto Misaka and Accelerator, I found myself more engaged with these characters and their history. Another positive would be the setting for this series. I enjoy a tale that puts science against magic. It has a lot of potential, and some of the mysteries of this supernatural world really had me going. And now time for the bad news, and explain what I thought were some of the weak elements in this category. Index is mostly shown as a girl who needs saving, aka a plot device for drama, and on her best days, she's just predictable comedy relief. I suppose some might find her cute either by her appearance or her innocent naive personality, but she just didn't really do anything for me. Toma has the traits of a typical protagonist, like always helping those in need. However, his black and white mindset can be annoying considering all the complex scenarios he finds himself in. Arc 1 has a good example of this. When the big secret about Index's past is revealed, Toma becomes very self-righteous about Index, a girl he has only known for a few days, if even that, versus people who have known her her whole entire life. What say should this stranger have on Index's life? The only reason he doesn't look like an asshole most of the time is because the show always proves him right by having him save the day, despite he lacks the proper skills or knowledge to realistically solve the problem at hand. Plus, he's a big effing hypocrite. He is always trying to play the hero, but whenever someone offers to help him out for a change, he always turns him down and says he doesn't need their help. Take your own advice, man. Get over yourself and take the help, jackass. Thankfully, the setting and supporting cast made up for most of the shortcomings I had with a certain magical end of his story and characters. I have always believed JC Staff to be a solid studio when it comes to its art and animation, and ACMI is no exception. I'm still not exactly sure what it is, but having just seen the opening, I told myself, this is done by JC Staff, isn't it? And sure enough, the credits proved me right 30 seconds later. Even though the season came out a decade ago, I thought it had high production values. One highlight of note would be several characters' outfits. Index's religious attire is something that you don't see every day. Mikoto's uniform had a simple yet appealing touch to it. And this is a total guess on my part, but I think a celery shirt might be inspired by the symbiote suit slash venom. If you connect the sides to the center by going like a big v-shape and then back down don't they kind of look like a spider or is it just me anywho i dug a lot of the outfit designs in acmi the animation is consistent throughout most of the show the action in the series is well done some battle sequences are especially nice to watch i was also surprised too when the animators weren't afraid to get dark and gruesome in some scenes this helps show that the world of acmi can be really messed up and cruel which i most definitely appreciated if i had fault something regarding the show's art it would be its lack of background characters in some scenes I found it odd that a busy city like Academy City would be abandoned by early night, but this is a minor complaint. Overall, JC Staff did a good job. When it comes to the Japanese audio, I personally couldn't recognize any voice actor, but I'm no expert when it comes to Japanese seiyus. My thoughts regarding the Japanese cast are mostly positive, with the omission of a few lines delivered by Index's voice actress, but that's more of the character's fault, not the actress's. The anime is licensed by Funimation, so it's only natural that they did an English dub for this series. The dub is worth a listen, thanks to its lead talents, Mika Slows Odd as Toma, and Mana Kuriel as Index. I personally found myself leaning towards the dub for this one, because all the magical mumbo jumbo was hard to keep up in subtitles. Though now that I think about it, it is funny that none of the supposed 
feels that British characters didn't have any accents to match in English, but maybe that's for the best. The soundtrack at ACMI is fantastic to my ears. I got a big kick from its funky techno vibe. It was literally the first thing I noticed about the show. I would also like to know that the folio, or sound effects, in the show are outstanding. There's always something going on in the background audio which really helped create a living, breathing world. And the noise Imagine Breaker makes every time it cancels an attack is pretty epic. There are two openings in season one of ACMI, and while I don't think either one is bad per se, I just don't think the imagery used in them matches what the show actually is most of the time. The openings are so dramatic and serious, yet I never felt like any of the characters were in real danger. Regarding the two endings, I prefer ending number two over one because of its hypnotic techno beat and gentle vocals. To recap, I like the supporting characters and the setting of a certain magical index. I had mixed feelings about certain plot points and certain story arcs, and I often found myself not caring or being annoyed by the main leads. The art and animation are well done by JC staff and got my heart pumping during its action. I thought both language tracks are worth listening, but if you struggle with subtitles, the dub might be for you. The music and sound effects are high points in the show's production. However, the opening endings really weren't my thing. Now when it comes to scoring things, I decided to change things up a bit. Instead of focusing on numbers, I'd rather focus on my overall emotion I had towards the show or production. I'm still working on the exact words, but so far this is what I got in my head. From bottom to top, you have Rage Quit, Let Down, Entertaining, Outstanding, and I'm in Love. So with all that in mind, based off my own taste and preferences, I give a certain magical index an entertaining rating. Sure, I got frustrated with this anime a few times, but I enjoyed what I saw and I look forward to watching more. But hey, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think about ACMI? Is a certain scientific railgun worth checking out? Share your opinion down below. You can help me out by hitting that like button and be sure to subscribe and click on that bell so you don't miss a beat. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Later!